So hello everybody and uh, welcome again at the Sheldrick's Wildlife Trust, Nairobi Nursery, where we take care of orphan baby elephants and orphan baby rhinos and later on reintroducing them back into the world. So the Sheldrick's Wildlife Trust is a project that was started officially back in the year 1977 after the death of David Sheldrick, who was a naturalist and the senior founder warden of the Large Savannah National Park. He died in 1977, and this project was started in his memory under the management of the widow, who is now the late Dr. Dame Daphne Sheldrick, who's been running the project since then until two years ago when she passed on, leaving the mandate to her daughter, Angela Sheldrick, who was running the project together with the mother for about 17 years before the mother passed on. Right now, the project is under the management of Angela Sheldrick. And so we take care of often baby elephants and often baby rhinos and later on reintroducing them back into the world. And that's why all the babies you're going to see here today are orphans and all have been rescued from different parts of the country and have different reasons for being orphans. Some of them, we know what caused them to be left orphans, so that's why we rescued them. Others, we are really not very sure. But since the others were found when they are still at a very young age, at an age where they would not have survived without the mother's milk, and also without protection against other dangers, that's why we rescue them, so that we can handrail them here in the nursery for approximately three years. And any time after the age of three, we will start to reintroduce all the elephants back into the world, and we'll always reintroduce them to Savo East, National Park and Kibwezi Forest, a process that will take them a minimum of about five years before they start to make friends among the wild herds, who will later on invite them. And once they've been invited in a herd of wild elephants, the wild elephants will protect them, will train them, will show them everything within the park, will also warn them against human beings, which means all these orphans that you're going to see here now, at some point, will have become as wild as any other elephant out there. So that process takes a minimum of about five years before they successfully become wild. And when we see that happen, we can say we've achieved our target because our main target here is to rescue them. Since they've been found orphans, hundred them, and later on, reintroducing them back into the world. The elephants will be joining us now. We are open to Nairobi National Park, so the elephants go out every day in the morning at 6 in the company of the keepers so that they can learn by natural instinct on how to behave as elephants. Here we can see a line or a group of them joining us now for their 3 p.m. milk feeding time. And the elephant in front is the main matriarch in the nursery at the moment. Her name is Maisha. And Maisha is approximately three and a half years old. Maisha was rescued uh, from Sava Conservation Area. She is a drought victim. Her mother is believed to have died from starvation uh, due to the long period of drought that we had in the, na in the country. And that's why she was left alone at about eight months. Right now, she's approximately over three years and the main matriarch in the nursery after Tamiyoi and Tagwa have left to Savo. So far, she's doing all right, she's responsible, and she's showing us that she can do it. We do have Satao, the older bull in the nursery, three years old, over three years. And Satao was rescued from Savo Conservation Area, near the famous Satao place. The mother is believed to have been killed by poachers. He was left alone while at the age of about four months, right now approximately over three years old and also any time from now ready to go back into the world and start the process of being reintroduced. Behind, Tami Tami uh, behind Satao holding the bottle all by himself is an elephant uh, by the name Lugard, who is over, uh, over Lugard was rescued from Sava Conservation Area near the Lugard Falls. He was found with a bad injury in the knee and was brought in the nursery because he was all alone with his injury and limping. So we rescued him 
he's doing well he came in at six months and we hope at some point he will be able to go back into the world at Kibwezi forest and start the process of being reintroduced next to me is an elephant by the name Enkesha who is uh, three years old slightly over three years and Enkesha was rescued uh, from the Maasai Mara she was found trapped in a snare all around her trunk and that's why we rescued her you might have realized if you look on her trunk that she's got an opening which was caused by the snare and when she came in the nursery in the first place we called in the vets to come and stitch the trunk back to normal a surgery that was successfully done but after a few days before the wound was healed the elephant managed to take off all the stitches from the trunk and that's why you can see part of it is still open but it is totally completely healed because the trunk is full of muscles the elephant manages to squeeze the muscles together suck the water in the trunk and blow it in the mouth so she's using the trunk perfectly which means she's ready to go back into the world and be reintroduced among the wild herds as well behind Enkesha is an elephant by the name Maktau who is two and a half years and Maktau was rescued from Sava conservation area near a place called Maktau he was found in a community all alone while at the age of about three months nobody knows exactly the whereabouts of the mother and the rest of the family members but being found in a community suspects that he might have been separated from his family by human beings and so he's a victim of human wildlife conflict right behind me is an elephant by name Ndololo who is approximately uh, almost three years and Ndololo was rescued from Sava conservation area near a place called Ndololo he was found floating down a water hole all alone very thin very weak very much dehydrated and emaciated and the status he was found in could tell us that he had been alone for a very long time and was as well starving and that's why he needed an urgent rescue he was about eight months right now over three years old and ready to go back into the world far end is an elephant by the name Mukoka who is approximately two years old and Mukoka was rescued uh, from a uh, northern part of Savo East National Park, a place called Edumba. He was identified by aerial surveillance on patrol who found the baby all alone within the park, observed him for some time, hoping for the mother to come back and collect the baby, but none existed, which meant that he was an orphan. And that is the reason to why a decision was made to rescue him. He was about seven months right now approximately two years old right behind Mukoka is an elephant by the name Ziwadi two years old and Ziwadi was rescued from the Masai Mara identified all alone within the park uh, suspected to have been abandoned or left behind by the rest of the family members for reasons not known but when she came in the nursery we discovered that she's always uh, being left behind or going the, uh, the opposite direction from the rest of the orphans around and later on we discovered that she's epileptic and sometimes once she goes into seizures she goes she collapses and goes down and she's left behind we suspect uh, that might have been the reason to why she was left behind we put her on medication she's improving well we expect her to be back to normal when it is time ready for her to go back into the world I do have uh, Kiombo on my right, and Kiombo is two and a half years old. Uh, Kiombo was rescued from the Masai Mara. He was identified all alone within the park, a very thin and weak, a sign that he was an orphan, but nobody knows the whereabouts of the mother. The youngest and smallest that we've got in the nursery is, is an elephant by the name Naleku, approximately 10 months, having been rescued from the Masai Mara rescued after the mother was uh, w died from a natural disease and that's how or why Naleku became an orphan right now approximately 10 month old second youngest or second smallest in size an elephant by the name Roho who also happens to be the youngest boy approximately 14 month old having been rescued uh, from Southwest National Park 
the mother believed to have been killed by poachers and that's why Roho was left alone right now approximately 14 months and so far adjusting well in the nursery I do have an elephant by the name Musiara who is over three years old and Musiara was rescued from the Masai Mara near Musiara Gate in the Mara he was identified all alone while at the age of about one month which is not normal and also not safe and I say not safe because an elephant at one month does not have any teeth to cows and greens the entire clown the mother's milk he did not have the mother to provide the milk no protection so he was just very lucky to be found still alive at one month and that's why we rescued him right now three years old and any time from now ready to come into the world and start the process of being reintroduced Next to me, I've got an elephant by the name Laro, who is uh, almost two years old. And Laro was rescued uh, from the Masai Mara or Laro Conservancy, believed to have been separated from her family by human beings when she was still very young, only at about seven months. Right now, approximately two years, and so far doing all right in the nursery. We've got Kiasa right behind Laro, and Kiasa is almost three years old. Kiasa was rescued uh, from Sava Conservation Area. The mother believed to have died from starvation due to drought, and that's why she was left alone out in the world. Right now, almost three years old, and also adjusting well in the nursery, helping the big girls, Maisha, and Nabulu, and Nkesha, the matriarchal role, uh, almost actually uh, being responsible of uh, Roho and Naleku most of the time. I do have Nabulu right in the middle here, who is about three years and over three years old. Nabulu was rescued from the Masai Mara. She was identified all alone within the park, a very thin and weak, a sign that she had been without her mother's milk or without the right food for a long time. And that's why we rescued her. We could not tell exactly the whereabouts of the mother and the rest of the family members. But being alone at a young age and in a very poor health state meant that he wo she was an orphan and that's why we raised her. Right in the middle, we've got an elephant by the name Naboishu, who happens to be the latest arrival that we've got in the nursery, approximately 18 months old. Naboishu was rescued from the Masai Mara. The mother believed to have died from a natural disease and that's why he was left alone so far adjusting well and making friends with everyone in the nursery at the moment for the short period that he's been with us so that makes a total of 16 elephants that we've got in the nursery and we've got 16 at the moment because we have taken two elephants to Savo, Tagua and Tamiri to start the process of being reintroduced back into the world because they, are, uh, they were over the age of three years. And that's why after Tagu and Tamiyoi left, uh, Maisha Nabulu, actually Maisha was left the main matriarch, being assisted by Nabulu, Enkesha, and Kiasa as well. So if you're joining us now, welcome at the Sheldrick's Wildlife Trust, Nairobi Nursery. The elephants have just had their 3 p.m. milk feed, and they'll be heading out uh, actually in the park after some time here. Uh, when we bring them here after they've had the milk, we want them to feed on vegetation if they want, though they have a lot out in the park that they feed on uh, throughout the day. 
We also allow them to roll in the mud if they want. We don't force them. Sometimes we throw the mud and the water on them and see how they react. If they are interested, they want to go in. If they're not interested, they go away. So we let them do what they want. We don't train them on doing anything because we set them free back into the world. And that's why while in the nursery, we want them to be in a wild setting. And that's why they spend all the day out in Nairobi National Park so that they can learn by natural instinct on how to behave as elephants. While in the nursery, the orphans need a 24-hour care, which means all day out in the park. They are accompanied by the keepers to provide protection whenever needed. But the elephants are set free to play if they want, to feed, to sleep. We just let them do what they want. We bring them back for bed at 5 in the evening, and we let them in the elephant has got one socket. Elephants that are under the age of two years have a keeper spending the night in the rooms and a different keeper every night so that they don't get attached to the same person. We spend the night in the rooms because uh, they need to be fed on demand on the milk and that is why they need to have somebody in the rooms to feed them on demand and on every three hours whenever they need the milk. We also have a keeper to ensure that the elephants are kept company. Elephants are social and family animals. They have already lost the family members, and that's why they came here. We became part of their family members. And if left alone, they become lonely and stressed, and they can be stressed to death. And that's why even at night, when they're still young, below two years, they need somebody in the rooms. And also for the purposes of covering them with blankets to make sure that they're kept warm. Elephants are very much susceptible to pneumonia. It becomes a challenge or a problem when they've got pneumonia already. And this is because an elephant cannot cough. Their lungs are attached to the ribcage. You can tell in advance and start the treatment. You realize when it's too late by seeing some water dropping from the trunk. And within a very short period, you lose the elephant. And that is why we have to make sure that they're kept warm by ensuring that they spend a the night in the room, by ensuring that they are covered with the blankets. You might ask or be wondering how does this apply in the world? When they're out in the world, all the babies are surrounded by the rest of the herd, and this will help them to be kept warm because they'll get heat from all the big ones in the family. But here, because we've got a bunch of orphans who are all still young and not related, and that's why we improvise to make sure that they're kept warm. So those are the reasons why the keepers need to spend the night in the rooms, feeding them every three hours day and night. You might be wondering what type of milk are we feeding them? We don't feed them on elephant's milk. And this is because it has never been easy to milk a wild elephant so we cannot get the real elephant milk. And so we feed them on a human baby formula whose fats are being emulsified to make it easier for the babies to digest. And it took the founder of this place, the late Dr. Dame Daphne Sheldrick, about 28 years to discover this is the right formula for them. Before that, she used the try and error method and lost most of the fast orphans. But once she pioneered this formula, most orphans have survived and gone back into the world. And that is why it is believed to be close to the real mother's milk. One elephant out of the big group takes about 24 liters of milk in a day. And the two tiny ones take about 40 liters of milk in a day. You can see some of them rolling down like a rojo and uh, uh, surrounded by Maisha and uh, Kiasa here. That is the role of the matriarch. You can see what they're doing to protect Oho who is right lying down in the middle.
welcome. We are live for us in the Robina at 3 p.m. feeding time. The elephants have finished the bottles. And the Sheldrick's Wildlife Trust is working together with the Kenya Wildlife Service to ensure that all animals are safe in the parks. And uh, this is because the Sheldrick's Wildlife Trust has got other projects like mobile veterinary units, anti-poaching teams, community projects. We got the aerial surveillance. We got the dock units. And all this is to ensure that the parks are safe, the communities are being educated, Children have got education, they know what to do, the communities know how to behave in case they encounter the animals in their farms. All this is working together with the Kenya Wildlife Service. The Lolo and uh, Satao on the other, uh, Musiara on the other side, lying down in the dust. Lugard and Ziwadi here, best friends spending most of the time together out in the bush. So you might be joining us now. We are at the Sheldrick's Wildlife Trust, Nairobi Nursery. And you might be interested in supporting the works of the Sheldrick's Wildlife Trust. You can donate a bottle of milk towards these elephants. You can also adopt an elephant. You can also donate towards the projects, the other projects that are being done by the Sheldrick's Wildlife Trust. You can do that easily by going on our website and finding out how you can donate towards the project. If you want to adopt an elephant, we've got a list of all the elephants that we've got in the nursery. You'll be able to see the orphans in Nairobi nursery. You can pick an elephant if you want, one from the nursery. You can see a list of the orphans from the Idumba stockades, a list of orphans from the Voy stockades, a list of orphans from Kibwezi Forest to Mani Springs. You pick an elephant of your choice, and help support them by ensuring that you adopt an elephant. You can adopt an elephant for yourself or as a gift to a friend. And if you do it as a gift, the gift recipient will receive the updates every month. And if you do it for yourself, you'll receive an update every month for one year. So you can go on our website, find out how you can donate towards the Sheldricks. You can donate towards what you want in terms of adopting an elephant buying a bottle of milk or supporting any other projects that are done by the Sheldrick's Wildlife Trust. A few elephants here interested in uh, playing in the mud because it has been a bit warm today for the whole day. Maktau and Naboishu right there. Maktau enjoying being assisted uh, uh, by the keepers uh, to enjoy the mud. It seems most of them might be going to roll in the mud. Let's wait and see. As I said before, we let the elephants do what they want. So if they want to roll in the mud, it is all upon them. Maktau lying down already. Roho standing right in the middle of the mud. Maisha right behind. The big one behind is Maisha. Satao is spraying himself on the sides. Nabulu joining in on the other end.
as I said, Ziwadi likes to wander on her own. You can see where she's heading all alone. Wanting to scratch. She also joined the mud as well. Makta and Roho right in the middle of the mud. Kiombo on the edge. Kiasa standing in the middle of the waterhole now. They seem to want to roll in the dust on the other side. Uh, we can see also Lugard spraying himself with the mud on the side. Maisha lying down. So if you're joining us now, welcome to the Sheldrake's Wildlife Trust, Nairobi Nasri. We've just had the 3 p.m. Uh, milk feeding with the baby elephants. They've been feeding on the vegetation. Now a few have already gone down in the mud to cool themselves. And some are also drying themselves in the dust on the other side. In a few moments from now, the elephants will be walking away to spend the rest of the evening out in the park until at 5 in the evening, when they come back for bed. They spend the day in the park so that they can learn by natural instinct on how to behave as elephants. As the elephants will be leaving us now, I'd like to say thank you very much for joining us, those of you who've been with us. Thank you very much for those of you who are supporting the trust. We are bringing you this because we understand that everybody is enclosed. So remember or keep to stay safe wherever you are we shall be bringing more live news for you here with the elephants so that you can have something to smile at right in your sitting room. Thank you very much and see you or we bring you more on Saturday.